What's going on YouTubers? It's the Natural Born Thriller and welcome everyone to everyone to WWE NXT Review, the show from May 29th, 2019. This will be the WWE NXT TakeOver 25 Go Home Show Edition for this uh, this week's episode because once I get done with this um, this review, I'm going to go for the WWE NXT TakeOver 25 preview before we get to the um, to the NXT 20, TakeOver 25, um, you know, that's going to be in the Hartford, Connecticut. And and then once once I, once I get done, to, um, you know, when we get to that, that uh, you know, out of the way. Then later on, in the, in the, you know, from the from the uh, from the from the, from the new week, well, to to a new week, I meant to say, we get to the we can get to this WWE NXT Takeover Twenty Five review of it as well. So, yeah, so this will be the Go Home Show edition. Your commentaries are usual: Maru Naro, Nigel McGuinness, and Beth Phoenix. And they're at Full Sail University in Winter Parks, Florida. So let's get right into it. The opening match was Mia Yim versus Bianca Belair. And the match started. They're having a match and it was a good match. Back and forth between the two and you know they're going like all know you then and all know you then and like like what? What now? What? 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 You know, basically, you know, get at each other, you know that. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that's that. <laughs> I love that type of a uh, 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 person personality of uh, all these two. You know, they. But uh, but um, also you know, having a match and everything. Bianca Blair was getting the better of her of Mia Yim in the match, and then in the end, where Karma strikes back at Bianca Blair, which changed to her to her um her long braided ponytail. Mia Yim uh t takes the um. Or her her, uh, her her long um braided ponytail, and goes for, um. Like um. A co-breaker type of move, Bianca Belair takes a, a nice bump uh of it, and Mia Young and Mia Yim gets a three count in the win. So yeah, uh, both women's in the match looked good, uh and in the end, Mia Yim ends up getting the win. Now like I said before, folks. I just wish they could at least save the match between Bianca Belair and Mia Yim for NXT Takeover 25. Because you, if you want to do this, um, this you know the 25th, the 25th um, uh, Takeover show. Because that just you know that's why they call it NXT, that's what they call it Takeover 25. If you want to go big with this, you know, go all the way, you know do do a big then make make more than than five matches on the card. Which I'm assuming is is five matches on the card for for Takeover 25. Um, but I'll run, I'll run through the I'll, I'll, I'll run that down before I end this review. But anyways, I, the point is I want that match to be part of of Takeover 25. But it ain't. They decided to waste it to waste it on on the Go Home Show edition instead. So nothing you can do there. But hey, me and you got the win. And you you got the commentary saying that oh this is Mia Yim's biggest win that she's ever gotten because she beat Bianca, Bianca you know because she beat Bianca Belair. Really? Wow. I'm not I'm not even gonna touch that. I view a package of the Velveteen Dream and Tyler Breeze, and well as as we can uh, I can, you know can confirm this one, it's going to be for the North American Championship. So there you go. I'll get you know, and we'll see how the match turns out too. Uh, we get Io Shirai. She was uh, being interviewed by you know, oh, I'm sorry, not Io Shirai. Excuse me. I meant to say um, uh, the NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler, while she was also with uh, Jessica Mendoza and Maria Sofia, you know, having a photo shoot and everything, and they were being confronted, um, you know, by the reporter or uh, pertains to or what you know, what Io Shirai did, uh, pertains to attacking uh, you know, you know, the three of the four horsewomen. And basically, she replied by saying, "Well, she's not gonna need a weapon, and and she doesn't have any friends because she's got her friends, and she will still be champion after Takeover 25." And there you go. And we'll get to Io Shirai later on. Um, what pertains to uh, to that that whole situation. So then we get to Kushida versus Drew Gulak. This was all about you know submission holes after submission holes. 
reversal of the submission hole at the reversal at the submission hole a counter of a submission hole at the a counter of a submission hole you know they're going out all out with these submission holes and everything and then you know and they'll start doing some um some other type of wrestling moves as well um and then in the end um Kushida goes for a flatner of like a uh a f he was going for a flatliner, but instead he does a, a tricky pinfall move onto Drew Gulak and gets a three count in the win. So your winner, Kushida. And at the match, Drew Gulak uh was calling him a coward, and um and just um has a right out because you know he took the easy way out by pinning him you know in the way that he did, you know, and obviously, obviously the feud's gonna continue on. And by the way, folks, uh, again, once again, another match that another match here. That was wasted on this home show edition where it should have been saved for TakeOver 25. Like I said, if you want to do NXT TakeOver 25, you have, you have your, your, your 25 uh, TakeOver shows, go all the way with it. Have more than five matches on the show. The Mia Yim and Bianca Belair should have been added into that match, you know, on, you know, onto the show. The Kushida versus Drew Gulak should have been added onto the show. You know, that's something they should have done. But instead, they wasted on here instead. So the feud is going to continue on between Drew Gulak and uh, Kushida on NXT, just like what represents the women's side. Um, with Mia Yim and Bianca, Bianca Belair's feud is going to continue on as well from there as well. <sighs> and by the way, I got a pattern here where it pertains to Bianca Belair and Mia Yim, because since the Raw doll Jesse James has set, has has stepped down as head writer of SmackDown. I heard he's um, now working behind the scenes on NXT. So I'm wondering if this whole thing with Bianca Belair getting the win over Mia Yim two weeks ago and then two weeks later, Mia Yim gets the win back uh, from, from Bianca, Bianca Belair with the whole fit, you know, this whole 50 50 booking. You know, with the whole, oh, wins and loss don't matter. But at least with, uh, with NXT, it. The wins and losses do matter, you know. So and and also in a way too. Um, either way, me and Yumi and Bianca Belair, they both look good in the match. Either way, no, no matter who's going to lose the match, like like what Stone Cold Steve Austin will say, you know, you gotta make the uh, match. You know, you got, you, got, you got two wrestlers in the, in, the, in this one match look good. Doesn't matter if, if one of them lose, wins or lose. Uh, you, you gotta make them um, you know, have a great match. Um, you know, coming out coming out of the match smelling like roses. Which means you know, it, it, you know, which means uh, in in a good way, you know, in a way to elevate them. So there you go. It's the the opposite, you know, where you know, when you we do get a great a great match when you when you carry when, you, when you're carrying someone like a John Cena, uh, John Cena um gets gets the um gets some um out of it while the other guy doesn't get any out of it, uh, other than fans will say uh, an excuse by saying, oh, John Cena elevated this guy. But anyway, it's not like uh that's not a hero there. I digress. So then we get to uh Kathy Lee. I mean not Kathy Lee. No, of course uh Kathy Lee's not a a, a, rest, a wrestling fan. Um but Kathy Kelly meant to say. That's that's what I meant to say. Kathy Kelly was interviewing Yushirai about the whole thing with Shane Baszler. So Yushirai answered that she's not afraid of her or her friends and she's gonna your your uh attack, attack them head on and all that. And then Cancer Ray shows up and says, you know, you know, she didn't get the chance to thank her last week. And she says, thank you to her last name as a women. Um, you were right there with Io Shirai last week. After, you know, Io Shirai you know, chased away the three of the four horse with, with the candlestick. And you were standing next to her with Io Shirai. And you couldn't say thank you right there. You waited a week later to say thank you. Whatever, but Kenzo Ray said that she's got her back at Takeover, and Io Shirai shakes, uh, you know, hugs whoever. And they, I, I don't know, and they, but they basically they walked off, and that was it. Whatever. Uh, a video hype of NXT Champion John Gargano versus Alan Cole for Takeover uh, Twenty Five. There you go. Um, I thought it was good though. I, I thought it was good. Same thing with the Velveteen Dream and Tyler Breeze. I thought that was good too, but despite the fact that. I hate the Bell Team Dreams character, and on top of that, uh, I hate the fact that you know crowds are, you know, doing this whole Breeze is gorgeous to Tyler Breeze. 
ridiculous. Main event time. And yes, folks, this was the main event. Uh, Orny, Orny Lorcan and Danny Burch. 1 2. Versus The Forgotten Sons, which is Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake, being accompanied by Jackson Riker. So the match happens. Uh, didn't last that long. I think it lasts about, what, <laughs> three to four minutes? Because all of a sudden, Jack, uh, you know, Jackson Riker tried to, uh, to, um, cause, um, you know, the match of, of, of Orin Lucas and Diane Birch at one point. Where Orin Lucas getting tripped over. And then referee sees it and kicks him out. And all of a sudden, you know, as, uh, you know, Jackson Riker is leaving. Also, he gets attacked behind by the Street Profits, which is Andrew Dawkins and, uh, Montel Ford. And the match ends up throwing up a uh, no contest because um that's when the Street Profits got in the ring and start fighting against the Forgotten Sons. And then the Orly Lorcans and Danny Burch got in the ring and then they, and they, they end and they, they, they end up um fighting uh the Street Profits. And then Riker gets back up. Also he gets attacked by Alan Cole and Roderick Strong. Uh and then we get Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Bobby Fish coming out of nowhere to attack um the Forgotten Sons and then Spirit Era is up being up on the the Forgotten Sons. And then our Rikers try to get back up, uh, from from the stage basically, and Alan Cole basically on the speed goes after um right Riker and takes him out, um, and then and then he wants to stay down, so they end up putting up a ladder and starts you know crushing him with the ladder, and that was the end of that. Oh, actually, oh no, actually, um, Alan Cole sets up a ladder, uh, to come come on top of it, and and he says that to John Gargano at Takeover, that, you know, we're, we're basically what pertains to uh when you point when he's pointing to uh to Riker, you know. The fallen, you know, Jackson Riker is undisputed. And then they end up by doing this. The, you know, the whole, the whole thing when they shock the system. Dun, 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 dun. Just, just saying. But yeah, that was the show. Um, and that was Joe Gomes' show for NXT uh, TakeOver uh, 25 for this NXT show. So I'm wrestling for WWE NXT. What? Three matches? Yeah, three matches. And my overall strength for this show, for this go-home show, I'm going to go six and a half out of ten. You know, the show from May 29th, 2019. So that being said, folks, thank you all for watching. It's the Natural Born Driller. Saying peace on the streets. For this was your WWE NXT review, what pertains to WWE NXT Takeover 25 Go Home Show Edition. Take care.